Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the next episode of my series, Behind the Raw, where I take you with me onto my computer and I talk you through my editing workflow, my thoughts on an image, and moreover, I share with you any mistakes that I might have made along the way, so you don't have to. Now, for this week's episode, it's the turn of a fantastic trip that I had with, again, my buddy Bernard. So after the success of my last trip, I decided to go back and visit and explore more of the areas that we didn't get to the first time and there was one particular location that I had seen images of for many many years and always wanted to visit it so this was the location that we went to for sunset and the conditions that we had were absolutely ideal now there was one challenge as well as something in the summer in Ireland is we have midges now midges for me I hate them they get into my beard they're itchy they bite you but I call them the flying teeth but they were worth it so I'm going to jump onto the computer here I'm going to talk you through one particular image and we'll see how we go let's go Okay, so I'm here now in Lightroom Classic and here's the image that I want to discuss my edit with today. And as you can see, it is an incredibly beautiful scene. Now, the water was perfect. I was hopeful actually that we would get some flat cam water and we actually did get some beautifully calm water, particularly as it hit right now from a sunset point of view. Now, the sun was setting over to the right hand side over here, but as you can see, I got some great textures in these clouds. I've got the bit of a rainbow here and that rainbow never materialized into a full rainbow but it was still a part of, part of a rainbow nonetheless and stayed around for I don't know 20 minutes and something like that so with this image I really like the positioning of the boat the positioning of the fisherman's hut and I was very conscious when I was composing the shot as well to not have this part here interrupt with the roof of the reflection on the water and moreover you can start to see that there's a subtle color coming through and I'm able to bring that out when it gets into the edit so I'm going to follow my typical editing pattern or editing style here but also if you look here and I'll give you a look at this in the boat there was a bucket and I was a bit concerned about the bucket but as I was editing it I said I'd use one of the new features that Lightroom have which is AI remove so We'll see how it gets onto that when we get to that part of the image anyway. So starting in this image here, you can see I took it at 30 seconds. It was at F9, ISO 100, and I was at 16 mil. So my general process is that I would do. First step is I will make sure that my horizon is straight and I can see it's slightly off here. I've noticed myself actually that I'm starting to slip on my horizon. So I need to be more conscious in relation to that. So this here is going to straighten out that horizon. So there is a 1.13 degree of a change, but now that is perfectly straight. Now I'm going to, as I'd always do, hit on the auto button because I think it's gotten very good over the last number of years. And already you can start to see a lot more of the detail now coming through on that image. Now after I hit auto, then I'll start going in and fine tuning it so I can see what it has suggested. It's bringing my highlights all the way down. So if I bring my highlights down further, it gets the sky a bit dark. Whereas if I bring it a bit up here, you see that I'm losing some of the detail in the sky. So I think close enough to what it was suggesting here at a minus 40, 43, I think it's perfectly fine. The shadows here, it's brought them up quite a lot. And I have this box tipped, ticked here so that if something goes underexposed, you see that it goes blue on the screen. So here, I'm going to increase my shadows until that blue goes away. And that means that there's nothing blacker than black. And then when I start looking at the whites here, I can bring those up a bit more and that's going to create a more vibrant image. But also I have to be conscious that I'm not losing any detail here in the sky. So I can circumvent that by bringing my whites up here, but I can also bring my highlights back down here. But I won't do that. What I'll do is I'll just pair back on my whites slightly so that there's nothing overexposed on that image. And then looking at the blacks here, if I bring them all the way up, it makes the image a lot brighter. But for me, I don't think I want to be able to bring it that way. I want to kind of crunch my blacks as much as I can. So again, the histogram, if I look up here, is going to tell me what I can and can't do. So if I bring this back down here, there's nothing going to be darker than dark, but I think that's a good balance in the image overall. Now, generally, I don't use texture, I don't use clarity, but I am going to use dehaze. And I'm not going to use a lot of it because I'm going to just slightly increase the dehaze here. And if you look at these clouds, that's going to create more of the detail in those clouds. Now, also, the light that we had here on the day was just at sunset. So there's still a bit of res residual light, but 
it's quite blue and I know Canon generally has a blue cast. Now if I go into my picker here and I pick a part of a grey cloud, what it's going to do is it's going to change the image and brighten the image up more. So it's creating more of a warmer effect and you can start to see the colours coming out here in the sky. I do like that so I'm going to stick with that but what I might do is just maybe look to increase it slightly and it gets a bit more of the orange, brings out that color in the sky more so than anything else. Now on vibrance as well, it's given me a default here of plus 13. If I increase that even more so, you see that the image now becomes more vibrant, which again, I think is nice because it's a nice, beautiful scene that I'm photographing here uh, in, in, in general. Anyway, now also when I start looking here again, I can notice that I've got some areas that are darker, so they're blacker than black. I'm not overly concerned with them because they were a dark area and if I didn't have those there, you, would, you wouldn't even notice that, that those areas are dark. But I am going to look at my exposure and again look at my histogram here. It's going to tell me what I can and can't do. So I've got a bit more that I can play with here. So now that's a lot brighter and a lot more airy image. Now, when I start looking at the fine details on this image here, I look and down in the corner here, I had this stone that was sticking out and I also have some remnants of algae or seaweed, or not seaweed because it's a lake, algae in the water. So I'm going to change that and I'm going to go into 16.9 crop. And the reason I'm going to 16.9 crop is I want this image to be more appealing because if I look at here where it's balanced, it's going to be a lot better, I think, anyway, from looking at it in the outset. But also, um, I can remove that rock that's down the end down here. Now straighten this up here. Also, I'm losing the information to the top up here, a bit of that color, but same point, I'm not losing an, a lot of the color and I'm keeping what I have here, which is the rainbow. So I think that's going to be fine here. Now I could stop at that and the image could be done, but like I said, I wanted to look at this here and we'll go in and have a look at this bucket that was sitting in the middle of the boat and like I said I was concerned when we were photographing but now when I've utilized these new tools within uh, Lightroom you'll see how good a job it will do. So to find that go in here and you're going to click on the remove tool and that's going to effectively allow you to be able to paint in around this bucket and you don't necessarily have to be exactly precise. It's better to be precise, of course. So I start in the outsides here and then I just work my way in. I could make the brush bigger, but it's a small area as such like that. Now, if I click on that, it's selecting it. So the first thing that I can say, okay, what do I want to do with that? So I want to be able to um, remove it. So if I say, for example, hit on subtract, it will take that out of the image. And now look at the job that it has done. Now you get a couple of options as well on this as you can say, okay, I want first option, second option, you see it's lining it up even more here. And if I go to the third option, it probably will change it even more. It adds a bit of old paint that it's taken from here. So if I now press enter, and now I go back into my main image, if you did not know that I had removed that, you would never know that that exists. And it's a very, very powerful tool overall to be able to have. Now, also, when I start looking at the edge patrol on this here, I don't really like this remnants of a branch. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna go into this here, we're going to select this guy. I'm gonna take him out, and they're gonna follow exactly the same process here. It's going to select it. So now I'm gonna say I want to subtract it. And now it's going to remove that from the image and it's going to give me a couple of options i imagine to be able to choose from how it actually runs through it as well is very easy i suppose it's not difficult to be able to figure it out but it doesn't take that long for it to remove that's that gone and then also if i look at this which is this bit of algae like i mentioned earlier i didn't like that so i'm going to just select that again i'm going to subtract and apply and that's now going to take a generative look of the overall image and then apply what it thinks is going to be the best. But the best thing about that is if it doesn't get it right in the first time, you still have these options over here. So you can click on these and it'll give you a different version and a different version. And if I notice actually on the second version here, you see it continues this line because it's taking a line from the left hand side, which probably makes it even better on the overall image. Now also I've got one other little piece that's here. So if I select on this guy, and actually I can probably select on this guy as well and do the two at once. Now I'm gonna say subtract, apply. Again, it's gonna run its algorithms and it's gonna take both of those out and it's gonna going give me a couple of options that I can choose from. A very, very powerful tool. I, something that I wish I had a long time ago because you have to struggle to be able to go in, particularly with Lightroom because it wasn't very good with its clone stamping, but now you can see these are gone.
completely. Now, when I take back out onto this image here, and I look and overall, there's nothing really else that I want to do to this image, but I do have a couple of things that I want to just make sure that I'm fine tuning. So if you watch these, you'll know that I have a challenge at the moment. I have a couple of sensor spots um, on my sensor, but because I've now changed this crop, they probably won't show up. But a tool that I use or a trick is using dehaze. So I remember I'm at 26 on my dehaze. If I whack that all up to 100, you can see the image goes to mush. But what it also does is it allows you to be able to see. So if I zoom in here, you can now see that I have a dot here. So again, I can go into this here and I can just go in here to my heel tool, select my size, click on that and it removes it. And now if I look overall, I have a hot spot that's here. Take that out, take that out, take that out. Much easier to see all of these just by using the dehaze. And again, you know, if I'm looking at the image here, you can see that the image looks absolutely diabolical. But if I'm going back in here, go back to my dehaze, bring it back to 24, and now the image comes back. I really, really like this image overall. Final thing I'm going to do, as I normally do, is go into detail here and go into denoise. And now that's going to run. The AI denoise is going to spot and see is there any areas that it needs to remove. I did spot some noise in the darker areas, but if we look down here towards the boat, where is where I would have seen some, you can see a bit of noise that's there on the outside on the water. That's now gone. And also, if you look at the preview, it still has the bucket within that because it's looking at the original image, not the changes that you would have done. So if I click into this, let that work away, then that is that. So yeah, a simple edit, but really, really powerful to use these new tricks that are within uh, Lightroom now and Lightroom AI. I really like this image. I like the color palette of it. I love the feeling that it gives me and the memories that I would have had to be able to visit this location. And how lucky were we to be able to have these flat conditions here with this great reflection as well also. So thank you very much as always for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned something with it. Please, please be sure to join and tune in next week when I continue my journey with Bernard and we go on an incredible loop road trip around from his house all the way through Mayo and back again then into Connemara and we visit some stunning, stunning, stunning locations. So I hope I'm lucky enough for you to join me for that episode as well. So as always, thank you very much. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, schlange voll.